and because I'm back, it means that the tailor has a town to tailor in. If you know that reference, I love you. Hello. It is five in the afternoon. I was supposed to be sewing all day. Did I? No. So we're gonna get started. Anyways, welcome back to, I guess, what is going to be another episode of a little series I'm gonna be calling On The Mend, where we mend different types of clothing together. And for this episode, today we have about 10 pairs of pants to hem. As you can see, I'm back in my childhood bedroom at my parents' house. And because I'm back, it means that the tailor has a town to tailor in. If you know that reference, I love you. Anyways, so I've got about 10 pairs of pants to hem. I did luckily, luckily my dad did tell me that we do have an iron. So that's gonna make my job a whole lot easier, but I was gonna try and name this video hemming 10 pairs of pants in a day, which probably is nothing for an actual tailor. Um, for me, it's a lot. But this is most likely gonna go across two days. Today we're prepping the pants to get ready to be hemmed, and then tomorrow we'll do all the sewing, because if everything's prepped, pinned, ironed, ready to go, then we can just get them all out of the sewing machine. They're a bunch of different colors, so it will take time, because we'll have to be switching back and forth, making new bobbins, etc., etc. the likes of the seamstress. Anyways, I guess we have to get started, because I'm gonna love the sunlight, and artificial light is gross, so. Let's try and get something done today. Okay, we're on to the next day. I'm still not finished prepping these pants, but I gotta get it done today. Or at least by tomorrow morning. We're gonna keep working. Uh, some of these pants are a little bit harder because they're more of that slippy material because they're looser fit pants. As ones you saw previously, most of them were just the traditional trouser style, uh, trou stretchy trouser style. So they were a bit easier, but Still gotta do it, and we're gonna keep doing it, so let's keep going. <laughs> yeah.
Okay, we have successfully gotten all the pants cut, mostly pressed, and pinned to get ready to sew. So one set of pants I'm going to be doing on the machine because that is how they were when they were made in the factory. So I'm just gonna do it as that was. There are about four pairs of pants that I am gonna do by hand um, since they're done with a pick stitch which maybe I'll try to show you. I don't know if you'll be able to see on these pants, but I'll go through the explanation of it on how to do it because it's a super simple, not super simple. It's a simple hand stitch once you get the hang of it and the idea of it. So let's keep going. I'm gonna watch The Princess Bride in the background on VHS because that's what I prefer. Also because the DVD is at the apartment, so. I have my VCR here, which means I can watch on VHS, so whenever I can, that's what I do. But anyways, I will see you when I do the hand sewing. Okay, day three, and we are just about finished. So I've gotten all the ones on the machine done. So I've just got four more pairs here that I'm gonna do by hand because that's how they were with the factory. So just kind of keeping things the same. I could have added the top stitching by using it on the machine, but just keeping the way it is. And I need a break from my sewing machine because it's loud and Honestly, I love hand sewing, so I don't really mind it. Try to show you what a pick stitch looks like. I explain it along the way. Once you get the hang of it, it goes really quick. So yeah, let's get these done so we can move on. <laughs> okay, so I'm on my final pair, the white pair, to show you how to do a pick stitch, hopefully. So basically you're gonna get a length of thread it's always suggested that you do about like a forearm's length just so that it's not too long that it will not and you're just gonna thread it through your needle but keep uh, keep a short tail and a long tail and don't tie any knots for these pants in particular I'm gonna start here on the on the side seam because I can go through and make a nice strong stitch to start us off and to get our knot started And the important thing when you're doing this is if you're not rolling this raw edge in, which is a possibility, um, if you surged it or you did like what I did and just did a zigzag with a straight stitch, always make sure as you're, oh, jinkies, as you're sewing to go underneath those stitches that you did in order to make sure that you're not going to fray the fabric, which is the whole entire purpose of putting those stitches in. Where's my loop? Okay, so this is called a pick stitch because you're going to be picking up uh, one to two of the wefts, one to two of the fibers in your woven fabric. And basically, so with this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow this raw edge right here. I'm gonna go in. I usually pick up two, just cause I'm always afraid that one isn't going to be strong enough. So you're picking up one to two, and then you're just gonna tuck underneath without catching the bottom fabric again. Oops. And I'm gonna go right here. You're gonna kind of make gonna make it diagonal so that it kind of looks like a whip stitch, which is just a stitch that go, wraps around. But rather than having seeing those diagonal lines on the front as well, you're only gonna see them here on the inside. So yeah, and then that's what it looks like on the other side. And just pull through. 
You don't need to make these super close. Um, I'd say about like a quarter of an inch separation or so works. It is a fairly strong stitch, even though you're thinking you're only catching a couple fibers. But because you're only catching a couple fibers, you're not having to worry about it pulling and, and you're doing it on the main part of the fabric. You're not pulling fibers from the, the seam allowance that you folded up. You're pulling it from the main part of the garment that is actually it's very sturdy. This is done when you don't want to see any stitching on the front. Like if you don't want to see that top stitch and you just want it to be super smooth. This is usually done for dress pants or dressier type pants like these that I have. And yeah, once you get the hang of it, it goes pretty quickly. I just did the last pair that I just did. I didn't even realize I had already finished the other leg. Like I had made a new, a new needle and I went to go do the other side and I had already done the other side. So it's something great to do, put something on in the background, like a movie, podcast, TV show, whatever. Do it outside if you can. It's a little cloudy today for us, so it's a little chilly right now. But I've got the sunlight, which is beautiful. And I'm sitting in my bed, so I'm comfy too, which is nice. That's something that I definitely like about hand stitching is that you can bring it places. I don't have to sit in front of a machine and a desk. I could go outside. I could sew in, you know, I could go to, go to a park and sit underneath a tree or sit on a bench and do some sewing there and be out in nature rather than being stuck inside a room. So it's definitely something that is a positive. So just at the end here, I'm just going to do what I did at the beginning is I'm going to catch the seam allowance from the side seam and just do a, just do a big stitch here, go around once or twice and then tie it off in a knot once or twice. And then a trick for hand sewing is to go into whatever your seam allowance, go down a bit to pull that end tail into the fabric, give a snip right on the fabric, making sure not to cut your fabric, and there you go. You got a hidden tail. And as you can see on the front, it's called a pick stitch because you got these little picks that that are just uh, nice and simple. So yeah, that is how you do a pick stitch. Okay, and like that, we are finally done, I would say. I have to now press everything, press the seam, the hems, just to make them nice and crisp because of the, a couple of these are really flowy pants. We want to just make that nice and sharp so that it falls really pretty. But I want to bring up two things before I go. First, when you're doing that pick stitch, keep it loose in the sense that you don't want to be pulling it because then you're going to see those picks a lot on the front of your fabric. So just keep it loose, but make sure that it's, you know, even tension and smooth. Makes more sense. I'll probably be showing this to you again, so you'll see it once more. More than once more. And then my other thing is, so, with all those pants, I've now got all of these scraps. So as someone who tries to be as low waist as possible, especially when it comes to fashion, my tip is get yourself an empty pillowcase, or an empty pillow, or a pillowcase and fill it up. This has all of my scraps from my three years of fashion school and my goal is it's almost all the way full my goal is then to just close it up put a nice cover on it and use it as a floor pillow you can also use it for stuffing for other things that can have a more rigid um rigid feel to them because if you're not cutting down the pieces to make them softer you could use them in like stuffed toys as well but i really suggest a few things like floor pillows because then you can really pack it in there and yeah so this will all be going in here 
saves the scraps from being thrown out and not recycled properly, but um, so thank you for hanging out with me. I hope you learned something on how to do different types of mending for pants and for hemming. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.